Hey, it's Sean and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and we're talking pH. Yeah, because to, to us, this is kind of the final frontier, where we were kind of focused on water chemistry and stuff, and then people started asking us about, do you, do you guys ever take the pH measurement of your final beer? And I was like, well, why would... Final uh, beer, yeah, no, I don't know. Why would we want to do that? Anyway, there's a lot of pH questions. Yeah. And I want Mike to answer some of them. Like, why do we need to care about pH in our home brewing process? Let's start there. Yeah. Like, where is it even matter? So for me, I started to become more interested in pH in my mash only because my attenuation, I felt like, just wasn't great right. sometimes. Right? I was That's having right. a real problem with attenuation, and I wondered, is it because my mash... My actual mash efficiency, not what we would normally call efficiency efficiency, that's more of a loudering efficiency, but mash efficiency, am I actually converting as much starch as I can to, to sugars, mm. or am I leaving some starches behind or non fermentable sugars behind, Such, and that's why my attenuation suffered. Just on a side note, attenuation means you start at 1050, how low can you get that? That's attenuation. You just, it's a percentage, right? So my beers may be finishing out at 1016 or 1017, and I was like, they should be finishing out closer to like 1012 or even depending on the beer, lower than that. Um, but is it a mash problem? So without really, but you don't know that unless you have a way to measure that. Mm. And the only real way to look at that is, um, well, you could do an iodine test for starches, but that can be misleading. We'll, that's something else to talk about. But the, the thing that really controls enzyme health in the mash is having enough calcium and or magnesium in there to begin with but then which is normally sort of takes care of itself so don't go crazy thinking more calcium is good for mash enzymes um, but really is the pH those enzymes need mm. to work in a certain pH range so when people ask we've gotten a few questions like why do we even need to look at pH it starts for me in the mash and starting there too now side note I, I don't really see any value necessarily in measuring uh, post-boil uh, pH, post-fermentation pH, because if you can get the pH right at the start of the process, it should carry itself through fine the rest of the way. The pH is going to go down progressively through boil and through fermentation. You're going to lower the pH a little bit, maybe finish at like 4 or 5 or something like that, right? Or 4 2 in that range. You know, don't quote me there, but th that's the basic idea. But if you start in the right place, if you start at a pH of 5 8 or 6 0, oh, for crying aloud, in mash, you're probably not going to get there in the finished beer, but you'd taste it and you'd say, there's a problem here. I see. Right? There's a problem here because it would be flabby. Mm -hmm. It'd be, you know, you'd, ne you'd never be able to achieve any crispness whatsoever no matter what you did with your water right if you're having flabby beers I really recommend buying distilled water adding you know five grams of calcium chloride or gypsum to it and brewing a really simple beer and saying oh suddenly it crisped up then that's your problem if it doesn't crisp up then mash pH is probably your problem too so um, but anyway that's I started looking at it. another there was another comment and a question too about um, you know, the, I usually take a sample 10 minutes after I've mixed it, closed it up, let it sit. I'll take a sample, set it down, and let it come back to room temperature. You always want to check mass pH, any pH measurement at room temperature. Don't ever rely on temperature correction, stuff like that. It's limited applicability. Um, but I just let it come to room temperature, and then I'll check the, the, the pH of that. Um, maybe I have like small, a small sample that I'll put into a pint glass of water, just float it in there so it dissipates heat faster and I can check it sooner. But by the time you actually get to that phase, remember I've stirred, mixed, 10 minutes into the mash, I check it. By the time it comes to temperature and you get your pH meter and you calibrate your pH meter, unless you, if you haven't done it beforehand, I guess you could do that. Now you're probably at 20 minutes. You really have probably experienced 80% conversion <laughs> at that point. Oopsie. The mash is basically over within 20 to 25 minutes. And then it starts to plateau out. There's diminishing returns going longer and longer and longer. Why we all still do 60-minute matches, I don't know. Tradition. I do a 60-minute match. It is what it is. Me too. Um, so anyway, I've been taking, I used to use pH papers. A lot of people poo-poo on those, but we use them in the lab if they're fresh and you don't let them sit around. You don't let them, like, pick up too much moisture from the air and stuff. They're perfectly fine for getting you in the ballpark. If you think you need to be at pH 5.3, not 5.4, or 5.4 and 5.5, then you're really pulling your hair out for no reason whatsoever. You need to be between 5.2 and 5.5. You'll be okay. You're not probably going to taste a difference in a beer. Mm. 
with pH like that. So my, my feeling, we've said this in the past before, I don't ever tr think, I don't have acid and baking soda at the ready because my pH is wrong. I just go up, oh, well that sucks. Let's see how it affects the final beer and I'll take good notes <laughs> and I'll fix it next time. Yeah. Next time I have a grist that's similar to that, um, I'll fix it next time, right? So you know, but you, you can't fix it if you never measured it. So pH papers work fine, but the real way to measure pH, if you're gonna worry about pH at any, at any scale, is to have a pH meter. Okay. It just so happens that hey. the good folks at Hanna Instruments, yep. uh, this is not, you know, like uh, the, a, a real strong promotional, um, you know, video. We're talking about pH, but the cool people at Hanna Instruments recently sent us one of these uh, yep. single probe pH meters. It's a, a, a beer pH tester. Yeah, which I've been I've been using the last couple couple show it to couple, the camera couple over there. brews to yeah. um, to check out pH. Um, in my wart samples, doing exactly what I said, take a sample, let it come to room temperature, um, and checking the pH. Uh, the one thing about using a pH meter all the time is that you have to calibrate it, and you have to calibrate it quite regularly. Mm. Um, you really need to calibrate it before you use it, that's for sure. Just to keep it working properly, you should probably calibrate a pH, or a pH meter a couple times a week. Um, so. They send you these little packets, packets of calibration solutions. Usually it's a pH 4 and a pH 7. You can get pH 10, but in the brewing application, that's not really important. I buy some, I've bought in the past some slightly larger format versions of 7 and 4, and they usually, they're usually colored, and it's sort of universal that 7 is green and 4 is red, and if you buy 10, it's usually blue or yellow um, <laughs> in color. But anyway, you want to have a pH calibration solution to get the meter set. You really do want to do a two-point calibration, not a one-point calibration. Um, four and seven, so that's ideal because we're going to shoot for somewhere in the five, two, five, five range. Um, and all it means is, you know, is you just have some of this in a sample, and it's really just a small tip at the end of the um, the probe. And and um, this has got a storage solution on there, so I'm not going to take the bottom of that off. But that's what it looks like. You know, and the, this is the end of the thing is that that just goes inside some solution. You can even just pour some of the solution in the in a cap. A cap full of solution is more than enough to get the end of this probe um, in there to take a measurement. It takes a little bit, it, you know, it has to adjust and calibrate. Um, but yeah, you do that and then you take your pH measure sample and then write it down <laughs> and you're in good shape for the future. So, right on. Um, I don't know, I don't, try not to fret too much about pH. Um, being like right on some magical number. I just want it to be in a good range for enzymatic activity. You gotta remember too, John and I were talking about this earlier, these modern day malts are so optimized. They're, they're in the malting house and even out in the field, all of these malts have been bred and raised and the process of malting has been focused on industrializing brewing to make it really easy for brewers to make beer. Most malt, you just get it wet, it's gonna convert. You need to I think most brewing tomes are going to have you think you need to be between 5.2 and 5.4, but let's be honest, modern malts are going to convert like crazy if they're between like 5.2 and 5.6, even 5.8. They're, hmm. they're going to convert once they get wet. They're just going to convert. There's nothing to it. Um, but if you really want to monitor it, you have to have a pH meter. It's sort of like talking about cell counts and only relying on uh, a Mr. Multi calculator. If you really, really care about understanding how cell counts affect your beer, you need to have a microscope. If you really, really care about how pH is affecting your beer, you have to have a pH meter. There's that's just there's just no way to do it. I mean, that's if you're going to talk about it, you, you've got to do yeah. it. You can't really. I've noticed too that calculators tend to, even Beersmith now has two different pH models you can select, and it'll give you two very different numbers. So which one's right? Oh. <laughs> you don't you don't necessarily know until you use a pH meter to confirm which model fits your application better and your source water and all that jazz too. So um, anyway, pH, questions about pH, have I covered it all? I think so. I think that uh, you, you covered the one about uh, taking pH readings after the beer is done. It sounds like it's really all about the mash. And uh, if you really want to dial that in and understand it, you need a pH meter. So it's interestingly enough, maybe uh, coincidentally enough, that uh, we have a uh, discount code oh. for uh, uh, your own Hanna Instruments uh, beer pH tester that you can use. We'll put that into the description below. And we'll also have a link that you can follow to buy that. 
Uh, you can use uh, the discount code for uh, any product on, on the site. Um, so use it up. I, I believe it's a 10% discount. Uh, so uh, please use it. Uh, they have lots of different uh, pH meters. This is the one that uh, they let us try out. Um, so. And I, I really, this one is really easy to use. I've really enjoyed this one yep. so far. And it's it's worked pretty good for two or three batches so far. I really, I, it's really easy. Yeah, so check out uh, everything that Hannah Instruments has to offer um, and certainly use, uh, uh, tell them that Brew Dudes uh, sent you uh, as you look at, at the uh, different uh, tools that they have to help your brewing process. So um, that's all we have. Hopefully if you have any other questions about pH, uh, put them in the comments below. Certainly there's a lot of questions out there and uh, Michael will do his very best to answer all of those because certainly he can do it better than me because this is his job. You know, he, he's it's he my works, domain. He works uh, in a you know science lab. He's trying to cure cancer. Yep. You know, it's much better than I don't know selling um, <laughs> things to people. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because we do this kind of thing every single week for John and Mike. BrewDashDudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.